Well, I think when I consider the questions that emerge from ubiquity and autonomy, I think underneath that particular sort of set of questions is really a greater question about authority and authorship, sort of understanding how the digital has sort of played into and challenged that we think about who is the author. And as author has had control and under his, and it was his, his purview, all of the actions that take place in terms of conception, design, development, production, and, and that final product. We always saw that completely circumscribed by authorship. The advent of the digital has changed all of that. And so what is autonomy if it's not about authorship? You know, what is ubiquity if it's not about a challenge to authorship? And so I think inherent within that is, is very much this sort of understanding that one of the things that's happened with ubiquity has been a dissemination or diffusion of many of the aspects of design and production outside of our profession. Whether we're talking about the use of robots in terms of construction, that's sort of one aspect, and that has appeared uh, quite a bit in uh, some of the papers and some of the writings for the conference, but it's also about the types of tools that it's, have spread out you know, beyond our control or our purview. Ubiquity, we'll get back to, but it's it absolutely changed the profession in the most fundamental way in terms of um, the conceptual thinking process, where our ideas are located and how they're developed through um, various operational strategies. It, it shifts the relationship between thinking and constructing and, and realizing, concretizing those ideas in very, very specific ways in terms of how we construct today and it's going to have a conversation of a, of a complete realignment of kind of how we work. And, and I say this as a practicing architect. Um, autonomy is another interesting one. I, when I looked at the title, I was scratching my head. Mm. It'd be an argument that the computer is attacked autonomy in a classical sense of the hand, the individual, and the personality which comes with irregularities and idiosyncratic stuff and that in fact, in the last, it's, we're talking about a three decades of development, there's been a, a self-similarity, and it's global, having to do with the power of the programs as they translate. And today we're working with programs that are hugely powerful in actually synthesizing and developing the physiognomic, the look of something. I mean, that whole notion of specificity, the positive side now for the practice is that given today's economic world, the reality of how our clients and how we work, that this ability to accommodate huge amount of data, of information, is extremely useful because you can align an idea and its economic reality very early. This subject of ubiquity and autonomy is very interesting. I think it's been starting since uh, the beginning of the uh, 21st century, you know, the year, years, the, 90, the end of the 90s, with all the developing of these new tools, you know, these new digital tools which have been changing in a deep way the way we do architecture. Because now we share uh, common stuff, you know, we share uh, kind, of a call, kind of a cloud where everybody's interacting. I think the world of architects is going to move somehow to come back to as a central role. And I think by the appropriation of this tool, by the modification of the architect with their softwares, now they're really becoming more the chef, what we call a chef d'orchestre. And they're at the center of the core and they're able to kind of invite different specialists to come in and give their point of view, give their input. What I think we have to deal with within the next 10 years is begin to redefine our practices, our approach, our purview to understanding our greater and significant responsibility for all of these major issues, that it's not just about the building as a project. Demographic shifts in terms of how our population manifests itself, the increasing disparity and equity that we see in populations, the increasing amount of social unrest. We really do have to sort of reconcile and recognize consequences far afield of what we do. That's a whole different set of partners, and it also means that we're not central anymore. In many ways, it ties into the question of ubiquity and autonomy, because if we're not the author who controls every stage of the process, but instead a team player within it, 
how do we address all those other aspects as well? The more interesting and more compelling kind of possibilities lie in these tools that now allow us to develop infinitely more complex, integral solutions to problems, understanding that architecture is a social art form that respond to these, this large amount of information that's available to you that you can articulate and, and find a way to, into the project. It allows projects to be radically more performative, not in the typical discussion of performance environment, blah, 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 but performative in the broadest kind of sense and integral connecting things. You can deal with projects and make them highly specific and highly idiosyncratic to the nature of that particular project at that particular time with a particular client and a particular set of uses on and on. And that is probably the single most useful the advance in the profession or what it allows the profession to do. I think for the, the students and the education process, what is really important, in fact, first is come to open their vision. School have to really open their vision so they can adapt to any situation in the future. Because somehow we have an idea what the future is going to be, but maybe it will be something different. So I guess the first thing is that the architect is able to understand the situation where he is in, and it's forcing how it can adapt itself. So for really the openness of the vision, the fact of uh, having this multidisciplinary education is extremely important because we have to adapt to a world which is keeping on evolving. So I think that's the most important. And I guess now really is a big subject. I think digital process is now really in schools. It's really part now of the systems. And, and I think I, I, I'm starting to see it in questions that students are asking. I think it's really the environmental push that school are becoming like experimental labs for all these environmental biosourcing, uh, understanding how to save energy, how to make a building kind of really inside the context, intelli intelligence with the context. Schools are really the great moment in your life where you can experiment. Instead of sort of thinking in terms of autonomy from the standpoint of form or the idea as dealing with autonomy, it's actually thinking much more about what those end results are. And for us, sort of understanding that our end results, what we actually produce, what we put out there in the world, will not be the optimized autonomous form. It'll actually be messy, complex, dealing with many things not within our control. We have to accept that within it in order to have true agency is what we do. We're much more powerful when we think about agency than when we think about uh, you know, our normal strictures of form or product or building or site. But when we think about the impact of what it is that we do, all of the sort of uh, spinning out consequences from it, then we actually can make a for real difference. We can turn the conversation.